talking today about all of the uh, video conferencing apps that are available to us as we're all working from home, Owen, and uh, kids learning from home. Who would have thought that we would be dissecting all of these video conference apps in the way that we've had to over the last couple of months? I mean, uh, the market has just exploded with these. I know you put a great article here talking about, you know, some of the things people need to consider when choosing one. So, mm. um, you know, what are some of the points that you, or things that you want to highlight that, that you talk about there in that article? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, we talk a lot about kind of Google Meet, Microsoft Teams and Zoom. They seem to be the, be the main three, but obviously you've got loads of uh, platforms out there that have been around for years. So there's, you know, Cisco WebEx, uh, Blue Jeans, you've got Ring Central, Zoho. And I think what it's important to note is that they're not all a one size fits all. Uh, there are a few considerations that people might want to put in when selecting a, a platform to do video meetings on. So price is obviously a good place to start. Um, what kind of subscription model you want to go for. Uh, their security, you know, that's a big topic at the moment, whether a, an app has the right encryption or password protected meetings, uh, host controls, um, app integrations, another big one. So, you know, if you're a company that's using Microsoft's uh, suite of productivity tools, you're going to want something that uh, works with those. Um, and there's other things as well, you know, even just a, a dial in support so you can dial in with a phone number, you know, not a lot of people, not everybody has a, a great internet connection at the moment or working from home. So that's, yeah, there's, there's lots of things you've got to consider. Yeah, definitely the connection issue. We're seeing that all over the board. You know, not everyone uh, has the uh, has a great connection, and and there's uh, so many of us that are struggling to stay online, and they'll drop out, freeze, all of that kind of stuff. Especially when we're talking about uh, video conferencing here. So, uh, you know, one of the things I think, Owen, that's interesting that people probably wouldn't have, or a lot of people wouldn't have thought about before, is the security. And and you've touched on that a little bit, but. Uh, you know, we learned about Zoom bombing and how mm -hmm. all of a sudden people are like, oh, wait a second. Yeah, we, we do need to think about how secure are some of these apps? I mean, is there differences when it comes to the security questions that you need to be asking yourself? I mean, there is, there isn't. I mean, you know, particularly uh, Zoom has done a lot to make itself, uh, put itself in a better light after a lot of security kind of flaws were brought to attention. Um, perhaps it wasn't as secure as it was. Uh, claiming to be, but it's now putting a lot of effort to bring those security standards uh, back up. Um, again, you, you're going to have a lot of these platform providers pushing security as one of their kind of core focuses. They know what the security concerns are at the moment with everybody working from home. Um, yeah, it's, it's worth having in mind. And those things like having robust uh, host controls so you can permit or deny participants, um, password protecting meetings, all of these are things that you should consider if you're going to be deploying one of these solutions. Yeah, definitely. Um, some good points there to keep in mind. And Owen, oh, finally, before we take off here, I think you mentioned it briefly, but uh, you know, take into consideration the amount of participants that you plan to have. You know, some people they're having meetings with two or three people on a daily basis, and others need room for fifty people. Uh, mm. You know, is that something that you address, or something people can talk about here? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you've got to consider the size of your business before you pick uh, any service, I guess, really. Um, but something worth noting is that a lot of these platforms will provide a free version, but they tend to have a lower cap on the number of participants that can uh, enter at once, especially for video meetings, and also a cap on the, the duration of the meeting. So if you're a larger business, you might want to spring for a, a subscription model and something that's going to let you involve everybody. Yeah, most definitely. I've, I've heard some, some stories about some people that have been on long meetings only to find out that the, they hit their time and then they have to, you know, start yeah. back over. Uh, they learn the hard way that sometimes a subscription is worth it if you plan on being on for a, a long period of time. Um, so great information there, Owen. And of course, we have a much, much more available on Tech Republic and ZDNet uh, information about Zoom and Microsoft Teams and mm -hmm. all of the others and, and things for people to consider. So we hope you guys will check that out. Thanks for watching.